Hey there, thanks for watching. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about Damodex blepharitis. I talked several years ago about it, uh, and I get asked questions about it, maybe too much. Um, I'm not exactly an expert on it, but um, I do see a lot of it. There's, there's really four points I want to make to kind of update what's the latest, what's going on with Demodex blepharitis right now. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of it. Second, it's easy to diagnose. Third, uh, patients don't often have a lot of symptoms that go along with it. And, and fourth, that it's manageable. So in terms of prevalence, um, a study was done at, at the University of North Carolina a few years ago that showed a, everyone over eight, the age of 18 has some Demodex on their body. Uh, they did DNA scrapings, skin scrapings, and they found that everyone over 18 had, had some degree of Demodex. And in some cases, we see it when it's younger. Um, second, I did a poster a few years ago uh, for Academy where we looked at 100 consecutive patients that walked in the door. We looked for Demodex blepharitis. We confirmed it with microscopes and somewhere approximately 30 of them had it. So we see a lot of it. Um, second, it's easy to diagnose. You don't need a microscope. I, I used a microscope a lot initially to gain confidence that I was making the right diagnosis. I was seeing as much as I thought I was seeing. and I, I did find that to be the case, but it's time consuming. Uh, patients don't like being epilated that much. Um, you don't have to do that. Sheffer saying uh, put out a study several years ago that showed cylindrical dandruff is enough to uh, make the diagnosis that you have Demodex present. So I'd say go with that. Anterior segment camera is critical. If you have one, show patients what you're looking at. Show them the cylindrical dandruff. Uh, show them the scalp lid margins, the lash loss, and the redness, and, and lid thickening, etc. And I think that helps a lot to get these patients on, on board, which leads me to my next point that these patients, interestingly, don't often have a lot of symptoms that go along uh, with the signs that we're seeing. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. Really don't know. Uh, perhaps only that it comes on so slowly. Uh, but you do see a lot of redness. You can see potentially MGD related to that. We don't know for sure, but Brevis uh, lives inside meibomian glands. Uh, and like I said, you see other signs of it, but patients aren't often complaining. And lastly, it's, it's treatable. I think that's key. Don't overlook it. Don't ignore it. In my practice, we want you to look better, feel better, see better, uh, and that involves cleaning up your lashes as well as everything else. If you don't want people walking around with red eyes and crusty lashes, it can be cleaned up. For typical cases, we send them home with commercially available lid wipes, which you can get from several different companies. Some are tea tree oil based, some are not. Uh, I think they all have some value. Take a look at that. And some need to be treated in office. Some of them are uh, pretty, pretty difficult cases. I use uh, a Blefex device sometimes to get after those more recalcitrant cases, uh, and, I try, and I follow that up with, um, with lid wipes and then follow them back. Typically, I, I treat a patient however I do it, in office or at home, check them back in a month, see how they're doing, and adjust uh, their, their lid hygiene accordingly. But this is a chronic problem that's not going to go away. Uh, it's not curable, I don't think, but it's manageable, similar to dry eye. Uh, but it's worth treating, so I'd encourage you to uh, look for it, uh, diagnosis and diagnose it and treat it. I think you'll have happier patients with better looking eyes. Thanks a lot.